Hello YouTube and welcome back to What The Math. Today we're continuing chapter 10, uh, normal distribution. And specifically, we're going to be focusing on using calculator when finding specific probabilities for normal distribution. So this is a combination of statistics and probability. And we're going to be using our GC, which is, for me, is right here. It's my web at EEMU simulator. Uh, and you need to use a graphing calculator to try to figure this out. You can use it with Casio or TI Inspire, but I prefer to use TI84+. So let's start with a question and try to figure out how to solve it. And this is an example two from page 305 in the book. And this is what it says. It says, if this, find these probabilities. So if you haven't watched the previous video, you may actually find it difficult to understand this because you need to understand how to read this notation. I'm going to help you in this video, but make sure that you know how to read this. Essentially, this says uh, we have um, uh, values of x and it's a normal distribution. And the mean is right here. This is the mean and the standard deviation is here. So it kind of looks like this. If we were to draw this, it's, it's going to be a normal distribution graph. Also known as the bell curve. So it looks like this. You have the mean right here and the mean here is 10. And then we have our normal distribution. This is standard deviation uh, of one and the standard deviation here and here is 2.3. So this, this area is 2.3 and this area is 2.3 as well. So once again, mean is 10 and standard deviation is 2.3. So get used to using these letters because these letters are with you forever now. They're going to stay with you until university and probably longer. Uh, and so here are the questions. The questions are find these probabilities. So question is probability that a value of x is uh, between 8 and 11 inclusive, so including 8 and 11. A probability of, uh, this is part B, probability of x is less than or equal to 12, or probability of x is more than 9. And illustrate your results. So when it says illustrate, this is the important part. On the test, you will need to be able to show this somehow, uh, either using a graph or uh, something like what I just made. Uh, you can also obviously explain how you did, you did this on a calculator, but you still need to illustrate this. You need to show this. So let's use the calculator. Let's go to our web at EMU. I'm going to place it right here and show you all the buttons required for this uh, particular example. So turn it on. All right, so here's our calculator and there's really only one button you need for this operation. Specifically, it's the button right here that's called VARS. And uh, what you do is you click on second and uh, right above it, it says distribution. So you click on virus and you get this particular uh, uh, list. And what you need is number two, normal CDF. Normal CDF might look like this or might not look like this. It depends on the calculator you use. Um, so what, there are four specific values here. And uh, if your calculator doesn't show you this, it's usually in the same order as well. So you'll just have to order them or um, enter them in the same order. So there's a lower value, which is essentially the part right here. Upper value, which is the part right here, is the mean. And finally, standard deviation. So mean is here, standard deviation is here. So for the question A, we, we are given specific lower, lower and upper values. Lower value is 8, including 8. So we'll just write 8. Upper value is 11. So this is question A. Uh, our mean here is 10. So we enter 10. And our standard deviation is 2.3. And that's really all you need to do. So once you enter this, click enter, and then enter again, it's going to paste it, and then enter one more time, and you it gives you the value, it gives you the answer. So what does this answer mean? So it says 0.475, I guess we're gonna use three significant figures, so it's going to be 0.476, so let's write it down. This is question A, and the answer is 0.476. Now, this is a probability. Probability of having this. So let's, uh, let me redraw this again. So what does this answer mean? The answer means this. If we draw a line to eight and then we draw a line to 11 with our mean being right here in the middle, it's 10. It's actually it's a little bit more to the left. I think it's a little, uh, so this, this should be a little bit more to the left. Uh, so what, what this uh, answer is, uh, what, what this answer means is that the probability of having this particular value in between them, between 8 and 11, is 0.476 or 47.6%. And this is what this answer means. And essentially, this is how you do these questions. So let's actually do question 2 uh, or question B and see what we get. So go back to the calculator. Go back to the calculator. Click on second VARS. Go to number 2. 
and here the lower value for us is not defined so it's actually uh, less than or equal to 12 but we don't have the lower value so we're going to be using a super ultra small number for this uh, we're going to do it the same way they do it in the book by clicking one and then using e if you remember e is the power of 10 e uh, is basically like saying to the power of 10 now here we're going to use this very small number so negative 99 so one to the power of uh, one times 10 to the power of uh, minus 99 so this is an ultra small number and then the upper value here is 12 and the other values we don't change and the answer we get is uh, 0.80772 so essentially 0.808 0 0.808 and this is 80.8 percent so let's draw this again so we have something that looks like this the value 12 is going to be somewhere right here and essentially everything right to this left side is what we're looking for and the chance here is 80.8% 80, 80 of having one of these values and lastly question C so question C is a little bit different so here we're looking at more than but not equal to 9 so go to VARS again go click on normal distribution and let's uh, think about this so uh, lower value is 9 but not including 9 so it's actually 9 but it's something like 9.000001 so I'm gonna just do this because it's still gonna give us a pretty accurate value and here the upper value is going to be 1 e 99 so a very very large number very large number everything else is the same and the answer we get is 0 0.668 0 0.668 0 0.668 or 66.8% and once again let's draw this just so we can visualize it uh, we have our normal distribution then the value 9 is just a little bit to the right of the mean so this is going to be 9 and what we're looking at is essentially everything to the right side of 9 but not including 9 so this right here is 0.668 or 66.8 percent and really that's it it's that easy so what you need to remember is this button right here vars button which is essentially uh well the blue part is distribution button what you want to do is click on this normal cdf enter the values and paste them and this will give you the solution now for some older calculators specifically some older ti calculators you might you may just get this you might actually get it's going to say normal cdf and it will give you brackets like this so the way you enter the values is uh, the lowest value is first, so this would be 9.001, then comma, highest value, comma, your normal distribution, comma, standard deviation. And then close your brackets and click enter, and this will give you your answer. So uh, for some calculators, you may actually have to enter this manually. But for uh, newer calculators, you just click on this and it gives you the table like this. Okay, so that's it for probabilities using a calculator from Chapter 10. Thank you for watching, and good luck to you, and bye-bye.